Hey everyone, this is Jeff, Swing Trade Warrior with WarriorTrading.com, back with the weekly closed Swing Trade recap for the week of July 24th, uh, 2015. So we had a few awesome trades again this week. Uh, the small caps were super hot for us, so we'll go over those in just a sec. The announcement for this week is our next set of live Swing Trade courses will begin on Monday, uh, the 27th of July. So if you're interested, uh, we do have a special offer. Anybody that signs up uh, for the Swing Trade class will also get a free copy of our Intro to Day Trading course as well. Um, so make sure you head over to warriortrading.com and click on the Trading Courses tab uh, to find out more about that if you're interested in it. Uh, we'll be teaching uh, things from fundamental and technical analysis uh, all the way up to scanners uh, and how we screen for stocks as well as the individual strategies including uh, the small cap breakout strategy that I've used. Uh, that's about a 70% uh, win rate right now since we put it into play uh, earlier in June. So if you're interested in learning all that stuff, uh, head over to the website, check it out. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, jeff at warriortrading.com, or get a hold of me on Skype at Swing Trade Warrior. Okay, having said that, uh, let us get uh, the trades from this week. Uh, the first trade I want to talk about is uh, CYTK. I'm going to go backwards in order here. Uh, this trade was alerted to us on the 22nd uh, of July. It uh, hit our scanner. Uh, you can see here, let me zoom in. Okay, you can see we had this 4% uh, move up on high relative volume. We have a nice ascending volume pattern. Uh, long entry on this trade was alerted off the watch list and via text and email. Uh, intraday at 705, also in our chat room as well. Uh, we caught an intraday spike up to a high of uh, about 7.30. Okay, that's about a 4% move we were able to scale out of um, and uh, take some profits a third of the size of our trade. So on most of these trades we're looking anywhere from 3 to 5% uh, percent profit for our first scale point depending on the price of the stock. Uh, we're looking for 5 to 10% overall and so uh, so far we've been really uh, nailing these trades and getting those returns. Um, this was no exception. Now yesterday uh, about three quarters through the market day uh, the IWM and SPY rolled over and uh, all the stocks uh, that we're trading came in pretty hard. So ended up uh, testing our entry again, which I uh, exited the trade on. Um, but toward the end of the day, the uh, markets were able to recover. And so uh, they ended up closing around 7.7. SCYTK ended up closing around 7.17. Uh, today, it had a move to the upside to 7.66, I believe was the high, 7.65. Uh, was the high of day uh, today, Friday, the 24th. Unfortunately, I had exited my position. Uh, we had people who held through the pullback, and uh, good for them, they made another 8% today. So uh, overall, it was about a 12% winner, about a, excuse me, about a 10% winner uh, for the people that did hold through it. Uh, I was uh, shaken out in the market weakness, but I was able to lock up profits at about 4%. Uh, on a third of the size. So not a huge winner, um, but definitely a solid trade uh, with nice range. Okay, IDRA closed the last leg of that out today as well. That was alerted to us IDRA on July 21st. Okay, we had this green bar here, this 4% move to the upside with uh, ascending relative volume or high relative volume. We like to see the volume increasing uh, as the stock is moving to the upside. Now what I was looking at on this trade uh, was this nice breakout spot Taz gives us, the Taz indicator um, that I use for this is uh, the market, excuse me, the uh, Taz boxes. And it shows a nice area of uh, resistance at 387 and it goes all the way back uh, to April 13th or so of this year. Um, it's traded sideways for a long period of time. <laughs> it's been in, accumula in an accumulation phase, trading just above the moving averages, and so it started squeezing this uh, resistance area, and it looked good for a breakout. Again, this came off the old scanner. Now, if you'll notice here, I, in my course I always teach, uh, you know, keep an eye on the major support and resistance levels. Uh, we're looking for a breakout over this 387 area. It's resistance. Previous resistance uh, becomes uh, previous resistance becomes support, and previous support becomes resistance. Take a look back here in December of last year. Uh, we had a move to the upside here, a big parabolic move to the upside in IDRA. Uh, it came down and it tested this 387 area, broke it briefly. Uh, but you can see over the next couple months, as it traded above 
Um, it came down here back in uh, February, tested that 387 area again, uh, bounced off, it came back up, and then finally it was able to um, push through support to the downside. The shorts took over and uh, we broke support. So this is previous support for the stock. Well, present day it becomes resistance. That same blue line uh, is what we're looking out for break, looking at for breakout to the upside. Okay, uh, very simple. It's very easy to identify these levels. I was watching this uh, stock after we got the alert on July 21st. We got long on July 22nd on a break of the uh, previous day's high at 375. Uh, then yesterday we had a nice, uh, it was like a 13% move to the upside to 416. So we ended up getting about 40 cents on this, or 30 cents on this trade, uh, 31 cents on this trade um, on a few thousand shares. Uh, if you look at 4,000 shares, if you look at uh, the uh, pullback here, it ended up coming down, uh, closed at 395 again, like CYTK, I got caught in that market weakness, but it still held up over the breakout spot. That's what we want to see. Um, I scaled out uh, the next day, so this was just basically a one night hold, uh, scaled out for uh, an average win of 6.5% on this trade. I took profits over resistance, I took profits in the mid fours, and I held the last portion of my trade for continuation if we got a move to the upside. Uh, we did not get a move to the upside. Today, the market's Friday, they uh, came in pretty hard, and so we ended up stopping out at 390, where we put our profit stop. Once it broke this previous uh, resistance area, um, it showed me that uh, the stock wasn't strong enough to hold up at that level, so it might pop back up, but we took our profits and we bailed on it. Uh, the last portion was a uh, you know, 3% winner or something like that. But because we were in the driver's seat of the trade the whole time by buying uh, stocks with the ascending volume pattern and, um, you know, the relevant move to the upside here, uh, we were able to stay profitable even in turbulent markets. So that was a great trade for us. Okay, OGXI. <clears throat> Another trade we took this week. Um, let's see, this one was alerted on the 20th of July, right here. Okay, so we have this nice bull flag pattern forming here, right? We got the flag staff here, and it's trading sideways uh, inside the flag, uh, waiting for it to make another move up. We got the alert the next day. We ended up getting long over the high of the flag, which is on this red day, actually. Um, we got long at 291 once we broke the top of the flag. Got an instant move up to 306 intraday and uh, on the next day. Um, and we were able to scale out on the third day of the trade. Uh, I started taking profits on the move up to 324. Okay, so this ended up becoming a 5.5% uh, winner for us. Um, and uh, it was another great trade that uh, was normally a pretty light moving or a pretty light trading stock. It's put in. Uh, some big relative volume these last few days as it's been in this breakout phase here. It's very volatile. Um, early morning trading tends to be very light. Uh, and on average, it only trades a couple hundred thousand shares a day. But for the past few days, it's been trading well over a million shares. So that's what we want to see. Buyers coming into the stock, high relative volume, uh, pushing price action to the upside. And we get our breakout of 5 to 10%. And we scale out along the way. Now, move from 290 to 324. Uh, today is actually probably closer. Uh, it's probably closer to 12, 15 percent. Uh, but because we're scaling out and taking profits, uh, predetermined uh, areas, um, we have a realized uh, we realize a lower percentage. But the point or the purpose of doing that is one: uh, we pay ourselves when we get into the money at a, in a sufficient area of profit, we take a little bit off the table, and we hold a little bit for a bigger move to the upside. So we're scaling out at maybe three to five percent, scaling out at six to seven percent, and we'll get out our last little portion, uh, you know, maybe at 10 or 15 percent, or when it starts to come back against us. But by doing this, we stay in trades longer and give them the opportunity to continue their run without just buying and selling after 10 cents or 15 cents or some arbitrarily determined amount we put ourselves in a position to profit over a longer period of time. Now, using this particular strategy, again, I go over this in much more detail with a ton of charts and examples, uh, and I give you the step-by-steps, uh, step-by-step strategy so you can trade this, and I also give you the scanner configurations uh, so you know what you're looking for uh, in the course. Uh, basically, we're looking for a three to five day move 
um, you know, in, in the trend. So, you know, here we got one, two, three, four, five. Even though this was a red day here, it never broke any previous candle lows. Um, so uh, this would be considered, a, you know, four or five day trender. Uh, and we're looking for an average of five to 15% of a move during that three to five day window. Okay, this gave us, uh, clearly gave us that five to 15, per five, excuse me, yeah, five to 15%. This clearly gave us the five to 15%. We were able to scale out, lock in our profits, and this was a great winner for us. Okay, a couple of trades that didn't work out. BSMX was a small loser. Uh, we took early in the week. Okay, this was a trade that uh, I broke my own rule on and I got long intraday uh, rather than waiting to see how the stock closed um, and finding uh, uh, using the previous high of day as my entry trigger, uh, I got long on this stock after it hit the scanner intraday. Uh, it was just coming down off of a, a you know decent sized sell off here, uh, put in a green day, and it hit the scanner because there was high relative volume on this day. We got long at 9:30, and the trade pulled back on us. Uh, it popped up to 9:37 or so. It pulled back on us down uh, to our stop at nine dollars is where we bailed on it. Now it's trading all the way down at 8:60. So obviously this was a weak stock. This was my fault. I broke the rules of the strategy and I was penalized for it. I lost $580 on this trade and uh, definitely not happy about that. It came against us uh, pretty quickly after our entry and uh, you know it's just a good reminder, an expensive lesson that uh, the rules of the strategy are in place for a reason and we need to follow them. So even uh, you know someone who's been trading for as many years as I have, I still make mistakes and uh, this was one of them, but it's a good reminder, a kick in the pants, to uh, not do this again. So not a huge loss here, uh, but once it broke this $9 support area, you can see it acted as support right here, resistance right here, and then support a couple weeks ago. Uh, once it broke that, we don't want to be in the trade because it's just too weak. Okay, the last trade we took this week, or the first trade we took this week, so I'm going backwards, was on Tube. Uh, let's see, we got the alert on on tube on the 20th also. Okay, so let me put that right here. Okay, so the alert came in on this big green day. Again, another flagging pattern, uh, breaking the top of the flag here. <clears throat> Oops, excuse me, breaking the top of the flag. Um, okay, uh, the volume here wasn't great. Uh, you know, I like the setup, I like the range on this. Uh, to the upside back up to seventeen eighteen dollars um, but uh, the volume was not strong enough uh, it turns out even though it was strong enough to trigger the scan it wasn't strong enough uh, in continuation to uh, continue the push to the upside we got long on this at a sixteen seventeen uh, was our price was our entry over the top of the day's high of the alert so you can see we got this move here to about uh, what is that about sixteen thirty three or so the high a day was sixteen thirty three uh, the day of our entry, and this was also the day that the market started rolling over just after open range, uh, which is maybe 10 minutes after we took this trade. And the market came in super hard on us, and uh, we ended up getting stopped out at uh, 16, excuse me, 15.90. So this was only a 25 cent loss for us. Um, again, another $540 loser. Uh, not a big deal. The strategy, uh, the rules of the strategy were in play. The only thing I didn't really focus on here was the volume. Um, while it was uh, high enough relative volume to trigger the alert, it's not tremendous volume. It's not great volume. It's not really breakout volume. So, uh, you know, volume is simple of an indicator as it is. It is very powerful in using the strategy in helping determine uh, the winners from the losers. Again, I'll pull up OXGI. This was a nice big winner for us. Look at the relative volume here. You know, the average volume is trading down here at a couple hundred thousand shares. And over the time we're in this trade, you know, it's trading up at a million. So, uh, this is what we want to see when we're in these types of trades. We don't want to see uh, stocks with a meek or weak volume. Uh, we want to see it as long as it's trending. We want to see uh, the high relative volume or ascending volume pattern. Okay, guys, that's it. Those are all the trades from this week. Again, if you have any questions on anything I talked about today or if you have any questions about swing trading in general, never hesitate to ask me. I'm happy to help. Uh, you can get a hold of me. Uh, Jeff at WarriorTrading.com and uh, again if you're interested in learning the strategy uh, learning how to be profitable in any kind of market conditions uh, as a part-time trader 
uh, you can uh, certainly look into our course. We are offering a special promo this weekend. Like I said, for anybody who signs up for the swing trading course that starts on Monday, uh, you get also a free copy of the intro to trading course. And uh, one thing about our swing trade students is that once you sign up, you get access to all future courses for a year, as well as access to all of the archived courses from the past, uh, well, since we've been doing the courses for six months. So um, again, any questions, contact me. Other than that, everybody have a great weekend, and uh, let's get back to it on Monday.